The richest treasures can be created deep within the earth in the form of precious gemstones, sparkling emeralds, brilliant rubies, lustrous sapphires. Most gemstones come from such exotic places as Brazil and Thailand. But not too long ago, there was a place in the mountains of North Carolina where the great jewelry company Tiffany came to mine its own emeralds. Most residents in Mitchell County have heard about discoveries of valuable gems. Some have even been found in the most unlikely places. Just ask Jim and Sandra Height. Hey, Sam, come here a minute. We moved here in uh, 1986, and we had planned to do some restoration here. And there was a wall here, and it was starting to deteriorate. So we knew we was going to have to put a new wall up, and uh, we did some excavating. We kept excavating and excavating, and I found some stones, and I wasn't sure what some were, but we have happened to find this one. Look at this. It's not glass, is it? And it turns out it's a uh, very good aquamarine. We do know that, that the gemstones are natural to this area, but would never imagine in digging for a wall we would find such a thing. <laughs> you could get two stones from this really nice quality, which is $20,000, so that's a pretty good find for digging in the yard. Today, anyone can go prospecting in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. So if you want something that sparkles, you'd best head straight for Mitchell County, the tiny town of Spruce Pine, and the Gem Mountain Mine. The little emerald, see that? You guys want to look for some treasure? Yeah. All right. You buy them, you keep them is the mine's motto. And for the price of a bucket, seven to a hundred dollars, you can hunt for your own emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. Just take you two or three scoops out of the bucket, put it in your seal, and set it over in the water like this. I'll fill the dirt out. Then you look for color. Match your colors up on your chart, and it shows you what they are. The treasure hunt in Mitchell County started some 30 years ago when retired real estate agent Bill Collins bought a former Tiffany mine and opened it to the public. To my father, the emeralds were more valuable the way they were found, the way nature made them. They were beautiful in the rocks than they would be to have them cut. People that came could pay $4 to go in and whatever they found was theirs, and many of them left with hundreds and thousands of dollars of emeralds. He was always happy when someone else found the emeralds as much as he was for himself because he just loved the emeralds and finding the treasures from the earth. He found many emeralds and these are some of them. This one was $7,000 and this one's 6000 I love the emeralds because they're part of Daddy. Bill Collins' mine was only one of over 700 that dot the hills around Spruce Pine. For generations, they produce such commercially valuable minerals as feldspar and mica. The gemstones just happen to be along for the ride. Charles Buchanan's father was a miner in these hills. He grew up tagging along after him, picking up the colored stones. Gemstones didn't mean anything to them. I'd always gather them up, take them home, uh, store them away. 25 years ago, he turned his boyhood hobby into a booming business. He bought several mines and started Gem Mountain with the stones he harvested from them. We've had quite a bit of rain on this road, and it's, it's not a very good shape. These mines are, all of them are back in the mountains, well hid, as you can see, by a lot of vegetation. From these mines will come the stones that end up in the buckets that anyone can buy back at Gem Mountain. We mine it out, we bring it in and sell it. People go through it and they find their gemstones. Years ago, this mine produced riches of a different sort, sold for commercial and industrial purposes. 
It was a treasure of the earth. Uh, some of this mic is sold for $400 a pound. Today, most of it's brought in from India, so it's not feasible to work for mica here anymore. Today, this mine is used mainly as a source of aquamarine, which can be worth from $600 to over $3,000 a carat. This is a big one here. But the only way you can get them out is to blast. This particular mine here, we probably get a couple of 300 carats of cutting material. Out of every 150, 200 pounds of material you take out of here, you're probably going to wind up with 40, 50 good stones, which makes this a great mine. That's a real good aquamarine there. Real good. This is one that we picked up in there today, and there's probably one stone in it. Once we're finished, this is what these are going to look like. They of it should be six thousand dollars. This is a piece of garnet, a big garnet. About 25 different types of gemstones can be found in this area. Without doubt, this is the gemstone capital of the United States. Dad, look at this. All right. Nobody wants to pay 10, 20 bucks for a bucket of dirt and not find something. I found emerald, rubies, sapphire, amethyst, so many different kinds, different colors, different qualities, and that's the main thing I like. Some of the stones that we found are worth up to $5,000 each and they're worth, at this point, approximately $140,000. Charles makes his living cutting and appraising these stones. His staff of geologists and stone cutters craft these rough treasures into fine jewelry. A satisfied customer is Gem Mountain's best advertising. Mm, very good stuff. Good time. Great. It's exciting. Right. <laughs> You might call Betty Kane a walking commercial. Enough buckets, enough stones, and she's created her own treasure chest. The rocks do not look anything what you'd think they'd look like, really. This is a piece of amethyst, and it really doesn't look like, you know, what it would in a jewelry store. You can see, okay, there's purple streaks in it, but you'd never think, oh, gee, maybe, you know, I could get something like this out of it. One day last year at Gem Mountain, she was about to call it quits when she found what looked more like a red potato than a ruby. It was that big. What do you think that is? It's not a glamorous thing. It, they've diverted water from the creek, and you're shoveling your dirt into this pan, and you're trying to get the dirt off of it, and the, the rocks do not come cut. They're, they're rough, and so to find what's inside those rocks, that really is, that's really the treasure. That's a real good one. That one you can cut at least two stones out of it. Wow, I halfway feel like I won the lottery. <laughs> the stones cut from Betty's 672 carat ruby could be worth as much as $36,000. The fact that I could actually buy a bucket of rocks and to have the beauty of the rock revealed as the real treasure. I love a treasure and a bargain together. Is that a good one? It wouldn't be a great big one, but you could get, get one out of it. Want to look for treasures all the time, you got to be some sort of a gambler. It's always a gamble. You're always gambling that you'll find that one big treasure or that great stone or whatever. One day, quite by accident, Charles Buchanan found his own treasure in these mountains. As I was walking along the road there, uh, I noticed an odd-shaped crystal laying on the ground. Picked it up, examined it a little closer, and uh, 
found out it was sapphire. Didn't realize what I had until I actually got back to the shop and cut it, polished it, and it was 466 carat sapphire, star sapphire. I wound up trading it for an island in Florida. Charles plans to build a vacation home on this island, but his heart will always be in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. I wouldn't leave this area. No, it's beautiful here. It's home, you know, I love it. Always a possibility of finding a new mine or another stone or another big find or whatever. You never know. So next time you're kicking down a dusty road, Watch where you walk. That unturned stone may just turn out to be the emerald, sapphire, or ruby of your dreams.